Microsoft has introduced a number of AI enhancements into Dynamics 365 Business Central. Let's take a quick look at these. The first thing I want to look at is the customer ledger entries from Business Central. I'm going to download those into Excel and then run Copilot on it using this prompt right here. Here's my Business Central tenant and I'm going to open up the customer ledger entries. This is a standard list in Business Central. I'm going to look just at the invoices. So I use that filter there, and then I'm going to download it into Excel. So here's the data direct from Business Central. I want to save this up to the cloud so I can use Copilot to analyze this data. I'm going to upload it right here. And as soon as I do that, that activates Copilot. You can see it lit up here. This is the way it looks in the Office apps. It's an icon here. I'm going to click on that. The way that generative AI usually works is that that user provides a prompt. Copilot will take that and give results. So I'm going to put my prompt in right here. You can see it. And then I'm going to start Copilot. And we'll watch it go. It'll take a little while. It's understanding the data. It's analyzing the data. It's looking at my request. And it's going to give me some results. So you can see the first set of results. It's a graph. And then here's some text about it. So what I can do with this graph, I can go here, I can add it to my sheet. I'm just going to add this to my worksheet as well. So we can see the results. Copilot provided a response based on my prompt, looking at the BC data. You can see that here. It created a nice graph. This is in Excel, obviously. And from here, I can use it any way that I want to. Now let's take a look at the artificial intelligence piece. It's over here on the right. What I'm going to generate is the marketing text or the marketing description of this item. I'm not going to generate the description that's over here. I'm going to generate something that would be used on a website or an e-commerce platform. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create with Copilot here. This is the name of the feature in Dynamics 365 Business Central. So it's generated the description. Let's take a look at it. I'll go into Edit. We can see the whole description here. And there's different formats I can use. I could just use the tagline, which is the first line in the marketing text. Or I can use paragraph, which is a further description of this item. And if you read the description here, you can see that it took the information from Business Central, including the attributes, and create a text that would be suitable for marketing. You can see at the bottom below the text here, there's a number of different formatting options I can use if I want to do that right within Business Central. So one thing that's nice about this, if you don't like the results that the artificial intelligence generated, you can just clear it and run it again, and it will give you another version of that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to run it again. It gives me a new version. If I don't like this version, I can either run it again or I can go back to a previous version. This one's pretty lofty. And I have an option to change that as well. If I go to more settings here, I've got these options for additional settings on how the AI will be used to generate that text. I also have a tone of voice here. So I can do a lot right within Dynamics 365 Business Central to generate this marketing text that I can use in a number of different places. Once I'm done with this, I'll just hit OK, and I'm done. This stays with the item. I can always go back and use it, or I can regenerate it. And again, it's based on the description of the item. It's based on these attributes down here. If I change attributes, it wouldn't necessarily change the output of the generated text. And what I wanted to show you is Copilot's ability to match a large number of transactions from Business Central to a few entries from your bank statement. So let's go take a look at it. Here's my bank reconciliation. Now let's take a look at reconciling with Copilot. I'll click on Reconcile with Copilot. Copilot will look at all the data in the bank reconciliation module and attempt to make a match between the bank statement 
and the Business Central data. And here you can see it comes up with some matches and it allows you to preview the matches before you accept them. We're just looking at provisional matches. So what I can do is on these payments, I can click on this. It'll show me all the payments that it determined were part of the deposit on the bank statement. Likewise, if I look at all the payments, it'll look at all the payments that it tried to match up with the information on the bank statement. And even though the auto-matched functionality in Business Central picked up nothing, Copilot was able to match two lines of the bank statement to lines within Business Central. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. So it now shows the amount being applied and I'm done with this reconciliation. What Copilot did is looked at the information in Business Central. The dates were a little different. Copilot said, that's okay. It also summarized information because I had one entry for customer payments. And when it looked at the BC data, it pulled up all the payments to equal that amount. Same thing with the vendor payments. So now I'm pretty much done. And all I need to do is go ahead and reconcile this. I've got total difference of zero. I am done. I'm gonna go ahead and post this. And the reconciliation is done. Let's start out by looking at this item here. In the item card, there's a forecast window down here. You can see that fact window right there. And I already have a forecast set up and running in my system. But let's take a look at how I did that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna delete this forecast for this particular item. There it goes. And this is real handy. This gives me access to almost everything about forecasting in Business Central. Let's go back to this item here. There's not a sales forecast available because I deleted it earlier, but we can run it for this item right from this page. So we'll go to Actions, Forecast. So we'll update the forecast. And you can see here that this is a combination of those two methods that we looked at earlier. What's nice about this is from this screen, you can change those time series methods and take a look at the results. So if I wanted to do that, all I need to do is go to Forecast, Forecast Settings, I can select a different method here. Let's just go with the ETS. I'll save that. I'm back at the screen. This still has the old forecast in it, but let me run it again. And you'll see it changed slightly. So now it's moved up. It's just using the one method and the forecast is a little higher. This is the sales forecast. I can also look at the inventory forecast and I can see I already have a problem. Before we continue, if you like this type of content, the best way to support us and to help others find this content is to subscribe to our channel, activate the notifications, and share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for helping us grow this channel. Let's get back to the demonstration. It's easy to create your own model. It's easy to do, just create my model. And what it does is it looks at the data in your system and creates a model to fit your system, your data, and your business. And then it will predict the likelihood of open invoices being paid on time or not. So I've recently run this, so let's take a look at the results. One way to look at the results is go to the Role Center for Business Manager, and you can see I've got a message right here. It says, these are invoices predicted to be overdue. Let's take a look at them. Now my system date is June 30th, 2024, and I recently posted this invoice with a document date of 6-30-2024. Without the predictive analysis, the system would assume that this invoice would be paid on a timely basis based on the terms for this customer and this invoice. Let's go to the right here and look at the payment prediction. Here's the payment prediction here. The system is looking at this particular customer, this particular invoice, and predicting that this payment will be late even though this customer is given a month to pay, you can see that the due date is not until July 30th, 2024. But the system is saying it's probably going to be late. It also assigns confidence to this prediction. You can see in this case, it's very high. One of the best ways to look at this is on the role center for the accountant. If I scroll down here, I have the cash flow forecast right here. What I like about this particular graph is, first of all, it's a nice graph. There's a lot of information in it, but I also have the ability to access almost anything in the cash flow functionality from this graph. 
You can see I can do the drop down here. I can change the period length that I'm looking at. I can also recalculate the forecast. I can also add manual revenue or expenses. So for example, if I go into expenses here, I may want to put payrolls in here because payrolls are coming up on a regular basis. It's a hard number. I can enter those and that will affect the reporting on my cash flow. So let's do that. I'll just add that one number. You can add as many as you want to. You can go back and edit them if you want. Once I've done that, I can just recalculate the forecast. I recalculated, it. it's changed the graph, but let's take a look at some of the specifics on this graph. If I go over here, I can see the composition on my cash flow for this period of time. We're looking at one month. You can see where all the cash flow is coming from and where it's going, receivables, payables. You can also see down here at the bottom, Azure AI is also adding some information. We can drill down to any of these buckets within the graph and get more information. So for example, I get a look at my liquid funds here. Let's click on that. It shows me the accounts in which the cash exists today. Let's go back. We can look at the Azure AI here. So the Azure AI is adding some entries in different sections. You can see that payables, purchasing, receivables based on that model that we just looked at. If you're not yet using cash flow forecasting in Dynamics 365 Business Central, you should really try it out. It's pretty easy to set up. And I think once you get used to the graphs and the reporting, you'll really like it. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a user document that shows how to create a general journal entry in Dynamics 365 Business Central. And what I need to do in Copilot is to give it a prompt so it knows what to do. So let's use this prompt. You can see that it gives you nice formatting right out of the box. And this is why it's nice to have Copilot inside of Word because it will do the formatting for you. Another thing I can do is automatically create a PowerPoint presentation using Copilot. I'm gonna put a simple prompt in. Here's the user document that we just created. So I'm gonna click on that. Now Copilot has all it needs to create a presentation in PowerPoint. So let's start it. So it's done creating the PowerPoint presentation. So this is an easy way to start on a presentation. If you've got an idea, something you want to do in PowerPoint, you can start it off with Copilot and then work from there. This will save you a lot of time. You can see the sales order right there. And this is ready to go. It's already in the ERP system. So I'm going to reply back to the customer telling her that I send out those two chairs. I can easily do that here. Hit reply. And I'm going to use Copilot to help me out. So this is my basic message, but I want Copilot to take another look at it. So I'm gonna generate a better response. So I like this just a little bit better. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna keep it, send it off to the client. So I use Copilot in Outlook to help me summarize the email string and also provide a better response to my client. We just took a quick look at a number of AI enhancements that Microsoft has put into Dynamics 365 Business Central. They're easy to set up and easy to use. I think you'll find them useful in your business. Thank you.